a hot screwdriver or something and putting it on that plastic and sealing it back over. But out here you don't have to do that because we can find out in the Spinifex country a natural cure. I'll just tilt him back so I don't lose any water because water is pretty important around here. Yeah, that stopped him. What I've got here is a bit of spinifex resin. It's not really resin. The ants have gathered it together to make an ant's nest out of it. The resin seeps out of the stems and the flowerings of the spinifex grass out here. They put it together and build their nest up, and it ends up rock hard. You can melt this stuff down and use it like a glue or a putty or something like that. And when it dries out, it's very, very hard, as you can see there. I'll just leave that aside for a minute, because I'm going to have to light a fire to get that melted down. I'll show you a little trick that you can use for lighting fires out in the bush, if you're lucky enough, without matches. You get a bit of Condi's crystals and sugar and mix them together, 50-50. You can put him on a rock like that, spread him out a bit, and then using a bit of that cotton wool, you scrape a knife very hard over the top. And maybe if you're lucky, you can get the two crystals to crush up and react with each other and cause a spark to fly, which hopefully the, the cotton wool will pick up and ignite. There we go. Smash up some of this resin now. There we go. Put him in the heat. Put it on the fire. Let him melt down a bit. Good idea to have a fire going out in these parts, particularly if you get caught and you're lost. People can see them quite often from miles away. Another good thing to have is one of these things here. It's a signal mirror. They've got an aiming mark in them. They reflect the sunlight straight up into the sky. They're excellent. That should dry off nice and hard pretty quickly. But I reckon I know where I can get some water to top it up again too. Survival can often depend on a bit of ingenuity. And that can mean making the country work for you in unusual ways. This is the sort of thing I'm looking for. A eucalypt or gum tree. Give you a quick refresher on botany because what happens is that the gums and all the vegetation around here they suck up the moisture out of the soil pump it up through capillary action through the trunk and then the branches and then disperse it off into the atmosphere now if you can capture that moisture before it goes into the atmosphere you've got yourself water looking around here you wouldn't reckon that there was any moisture at all in the soil but the tree doing its work and the fact that it's here alive and well tells us there's got to be some there somewhere. So what I'm going to do is put this great big plastic bag over this branch here. Once you've sealed the bag over the branch, it doesn't take long in these hot conditions for the process to start up. 
from here on, the bag and the sun do all the work for you. All you need to do is get out of the heat and save your energy. With a bit of patience and a few hours wait, you'll soon have some water. May not seem like much, but it could be enough to save your life. Try this out and see if it works. Yep, good as new. Jamanu is on the northern fringes of the Tanami Desert. And what better way to finish off a desert journey than with a bush tucker trip? In Aboriginal society, it's the women who do the great majority of the food gathering. The men are the hunters. So it's the women that I'm indebted to for most of my knowledge about bush tucker. Today we're digging for that gourmet food of the desert, the witchetty grub. You find them in the root system of the Acacia Kempiala, or witchetty bush as it's usually called. These women are descendants of the nomadic people who once populated the desert. And they still value these traditional foods more than anything else they eat today. When you're talking about bush tucker in Australia, you really can't go without the witchetty grub because this fella is a real classic. Eventually these grubs grow up and turn into a moth. They burrow themselves out of the ground and fly away. So the trick is to dig them up before they get to that stage. There are two ways that you can eat them. Cook them up on the hot coals and eat them cooked, or you can eat them raw. Tell you something, a few years ago an old fellow way down the south of here told me that there were still a couple of small Aboriginal groups walking around the desert country. And a bush tucker like this, I reckon I can't blame them. Right. Eaten raw, the witchetty grubs are very rich. Sometimes. Some raw, eh? Yeah. And when they're cooked, they taste a bit like scrambled eggs. That means Wooka. For the women of larger Manu, a bush tucker trip is a continuing ritual which links them to their country and to their past. <laughs> and for me, well, it's just great to be part of it. You want to pass it? I'm your top friend to be here. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. 